nothing to do with us. We are always looking across borders, whether national, ethnic, or cultural. The issue is not if, but how we look. The encounters are staged in various ways, from the surveillance practiced by the migra to the no se paga por ver of the street vendors. We participate in acts as disparate as witnessing, watching, peeping, as well as percepticide or self-blinding. Those acts entail different modes of identification, misidentification, seeing or disbelieving what we see with our own eyes. And then I go through a couple of different things that have to do with the problems of seeing. I'll just say very briefly, one is that, one of the theories is that we now have so many aids for seeing. If you talk about the telescope, the microscope, television, so many things that allow us to see what's happening everywhere, there's a very deep distrust of what we see with our own eyes. People feel that they're being manipulated by what they see, so, or, or they suffer compassion fatigue. You know, how many times do you see disasters on the television and CNN and all of these things? Um, so that the way that the spectacles are framed and transmitted through the mass media threatens the truth value of what we see. It turns any and all real occurrences into one more commodity on our screen. So that's one of the reasons for denial, denying what we, what we see with our own eyes. But denying also comes because there's not a clear linkage between the seen and the known. Um, I'll, I'm going to skip this part a little bit. Um, there's also the peeping and the watching, which is another kind of looking, that calls attention to the fact that a lot of times when people see things, they're not seen. This is another way, something called perspectival vision, which means that um, if you look at a painting or if you look at a theater production on a proscenium stage, it, it looks as if that thing is out there that you're looking, but your looking is not a part of that equation. So it looks as if you're not in the picture. But there's another kind of looking that I'm thinking about, um, which I guess I'll call witnessing, although it's not a good term. But it's, it's better than the other ones because it puts the looker, the person who's watching, into the scenario. So that we're all a part of the scenarios. I see you, but you also see me. And it's a part of the way in which we can no longer think about ourselves as objective observers. That we think about um, our role in what we see. There is no stable footing. The viewing subject is also the object of the gaze. The outsider is incorporated into the play of looks. We are all looking, looking at each other, looking. The same scopic structure that situates the object to be looked at, to paraphrase Lacan, puts us into the picture. And I think that one of the things I've thought about is that there's a pause that comes from this mutual recognition of looking at each other, looking, and that this pause is politically very important because it makes us think twice. It makes us think about the effects of, of, of looking and intervention. So what I came to think was that witnessing and looking presupposes that looking across borders is always an intervention and that this space of interlocution is always performative. It works within an economy of looks and in a scenario where position, object, subject, scene, seer, are constantly in flux, responding to each other. Each staging makes visible and or challenges certain relations of power, whether we like it or not. The physical setup of the encounter influences the denouement of events. If Yusum and I had had the same conversation in private, my guess is that the outcome would have been different. Um, basically, I just end this um, reflection thinking that witnessing, however singular and limited, because I can only see from my perspective, obviously, um, at least complicates the picture and broadens the scope of the possible. It expands the audience and allows for a wider range of responses. So I join my perspective to others 
internal and external witnesses, artists, historians, researchers, who have struggled with the problem of representing violence. My role in the drama is not to keep quiet, but to be a better spectator, or spect actor, perhaps, as Abu Sobual would say, for the drama of uneasy interventions across dangerous borders implicates us all, and it's against the diminishment of our complex and interconnected visions that we must struggle. Thank you. E vamos começar a mesa redonda logo a seguir o tempo suficiente só para colocar mais uma cadeira aqui para as pessoas subirem, porque senão a gente vai ficar com muito pouco tempo para elas. Tá bom? Perguntas? Algumas pessoas não têm mais o que prestar mais atenção. É, eu vou mais. Eu vou mais. Eu vou mais. Não, não Oi. É, eu gostaria de dizer, em primeiro lugar, que é muito difícil depois de uma exposição tão poética e... Ah. Não entendo, não entendo nem tapa em português. <risos> Perdone. Eu gostaria de dizer, em primeiro lugar, que é muito difícil, Diana, depois de uma exposição tão poética. Só eu sei em inglês. Well, um momentinho. Depois de esperar. Depois de fim. Alô. Ok. Ela vai traduzir, não tem problema. So, uh, I, I'll talk for a while, then I, I say in English and then I say Portuguese, okay? Uh, well, uh, I want to tell at the first moment, well, we have had many people trying to do questions, and at the first moment, it's very difficult to make a question, uh, because your exposition has been so much poetic, and you have talked about so many questions, and, and mixed it and talking about so many elements about very important things, art, culture, memory, and all these elements together. Uh, talks, well, it brings us the question of memory and torture that we have also some experience in Brazil, but this relationship with art and the way you have presented for us with this self, uh, yourself present in the situation is something that gives us 